One hospitalized following collision in downtown Kingston. At least one person has been hospitalized following a two-vehicle collision at the intersection of Hanover Street and Charles Street in downtown Kingston. The crash involved a black Suzuki Vitara and a Toyota Probox taxi. Preliminary reports indicated that the accident happened shortly after 11 a.m. when one of the motorists disobeyed the stoplight, resulting in the collision. A Jamaica Public Service pole was also damaged in the incident. Police investigating double murder in Westmoreland. The major investigation division mid is probing the fatal shooting of two brothers at their home in Banty District in Westmoreland on Tuesday night. Dead are 34-year-old Leon Glaze and 31-year-old Cyril Glaze. A third brother was shot and injured during the deadly attack. This is the second of such incident in the parish in the month. Reports are that about 10.30 p.m., a lone gunman invaded the men's home and opened fire on the occupants. After the shooting subsided, the three brothers were found suffering from gunshot wounds. They were transported to hospital, where Leon and Cyril were pronounced dead. The other brother was admitted. His condition is considered serious but stable. On Saturday, May 11, two brothers were shot and killed while playing domino at a shop in Burn Savannah from in the parish. The deceased were identified as 44-year-old auto mechanic Damon Powell, otherwise called Dunkinee, and 42-year-old businessman Colin Daly, otherwise called Gary, both from the community. A 61-year-old man was also shot and injured in the incident. They were reportedly among a group of men playing dominoes when they were pounced upon and shot by two men who drove up on a motorbike. Up to June 9, the Westmoreland Police Division recorded 50 murders which is five more than the 45 reported over the same period last year. Opposition says no new taxes following Crawford's comments. The People's National Party PNP said there will be no increase in taxes under its administration following comments made by opposition spokesman on education Damon Crawford over the weekend. Crawford was speaking at the Jamaica Association of Principals and Secondary Schools Conference in Trelawney stated that 1% increase in general consumption tax would generate additional funds for the education sector. On Wednesday, the PNP sought to distance itself from the comments Crawford made, stating that they were not on a reflection of the official position of the PNP, but were made in the context of exploring different ideas to fund education. It is important to state, unequivocally, that the PNP has neither discussed nor contemplated the introduction of any additional or new taxes. Our party understands the burden that increased taxation would impose on our citizens especially at a time when the cost of living has been increasingly intolerable and mere survival is a daily struggle for most Jamaicans, the PNP said in a news release. The PNP notes the success of the post-2012 fiscal reform has meant that the government's tax in intake has increased year after year at rates significantly exceeding inflation, thereby rendering increases in tax rates unnecessary. The PNP also firmly believes that there are sufficient resources within the government's current budget to better invest in education sector. We are committed to prioritizing and reallocating existing resources to ensure that education receives the attention and funding it needs without introducing new taxes, the party continued. Opposition added that when it is given the opportunity to govern, education will be a top priority with focus on optimizing an existing budget and ensuring that each child has access to a quality education. Media Association of Jamaica expresses concern over threats against TVJ journalists. The Media Association of Jamaica Limited, MAJL, said it is concerned about the death threats made on social media against television Jamaica TVJ journalist Giovanni Dennis following the broadcast of a special report on illegal drug racing in Jamaica. In a release on Wednesday, the MAJL said the threats are an attack on the press freedom and should not be taken lightly. In this regard, we join the Press Association of Jamaica PAG in calling on the authorities to address this issue with speed. This is also an opportunity for the authorities to establish that any form of cyberbullying or 
cyber intimidation or acts which are not acceptable in our evolving digital communication-based system, MAJL stated. The association went on to call on the relevant authorities to educate the public that in the digital space, there are boundaries on what constitute acceptable authorities against people as they are in society. Many of the threats directed to the journalists in the social media space are brazen and suggest that there is little fear or concern about consequences. The threats have been reported, so we urge the authorities to take the appropriate steps, MAJL stated. PNP mourns the passing of former House Speaker Violet Nielsen. Opposition leader and president of the People's National Party, PNP Mark Golden, has expressed regret at the passing of former House Speaker and Member of Parliament for St. James East Central, Violet Nielsen. Nielsen, who served in several PNP administrations under Prime Minister P.J. Patterson between 1997 and 2003, died Tuesday afternoon. Violet Nielsen was a beacon of strength and a true servant of the people. Her pioneering spirit and her contributions to our nation will never be forgotten. We extend our deepest sympathies to her family and loved ones during this difficult time, Golden stated. The PNP extends heartfelt condolences to the Nielsen's family, friends, and all who were in touch with her and touched by her remarkable life. As we mourn her passing, we also celebrate the indelible mark she has left on our country. Comrade Violet Nielsen's legacy will continue to inspire and guide us in our pursuit of just and equitable society, he added. Golding said the PNP honors Comrade Violet Nielsen's contribution to our nation. May her soul rest in eternal peace. In a release on Tuesday afternoon, the PNP highlighted that Nielsen made history as the first female Speaker of the House of Representatives, serving with distinction from 1997 to 2003. Her tenure was marked by her firm yet fair leadership, her integrity, and her tireless advocacy for parliamentary democracy. She was a trailblazer for women in politics and public service, and her contributions have paved the way for many who follow in her footsteps, the release noted. It added, throughout her political career, Mrs. Nielsen exemplified the high standard of public service. She was known for her deep compassion, her keen intellect, and her steadfast dedication to her constituents. Her work extended beyond the halls of Parliament, impacting the lives of countless Jamaicans through her community involvement and her champion of social justice. The PNP also described Nielsen as a stalwart of Jamaican politics. It is with profound sadness that the People's National Party PNP acknowledges the passing of Wallet Nielsen, former Speaker of the House of Representatives and a stalwart of Jamaican politics, read the portion of the release from the PNP. Clark highlights publicity concern in closing arguments against cartel retrial. Defense attorney John Clark on Wednesday told the Court of Appeal that none of the common law safeguards were deployed to ensure a new trial would not be affected by the publicity surrounding the squashing of the 2014 conviction by the Privy Council. Clark was making his closing submission in the retrial hearing for Vibes Cartel, Sean Storm, Kira Jones, and Andrew St. John. They were charged with the September 2011 murder of Clive Lizard Williams. The Court of Appeal upheld their convictions in 2020. However, on March 14, 2024, the Privy Council overturned the convictions on the grounds of dream misconduct and order that the Court of Appeal to decide whether or not there should be a retrial. Noting the damaging effect of the post-trial coverage, Clark argued that the applicant should not be condemned to undergo the ordeal of a retrial because of the state's failure to adhere to interception of Communications Act. Describing his argument as a beautiful submission, Justice Marvel MacDonald Bishop said, You are saying that the Court should have stepped in from day one and deploy its resources, now we are learning. Clark also employ a Humpty Dumpty metaphor to argue that the misconduct of the jury should be enough reason not to have a retrial. Making his argument, Clark said the poison of the jury makes the whole case fall apart. Commending Clark for a strong closing argument on the point of publicity, MacDonald Bishop said, Everything you have placed before us will be considered. Thank you for the enlightening submission. On Thursday, the court will hear arguments from the Crown supporting a retrial against the accused. Please remember 
to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.